this is Peggy Hoffman. We've opened the doors. It's just about a minute or so before we get started. Looking forward to chatting with everybody today. As you're getting settled in, uh, listen, it's freezing here in Maryland. Where are you calling in from? Add to the chat. And uh, if you've got warm weather, do not say so. <laughs> We will get started in about 30 seconds. So come on in. Come on in. Nice to see you, Stephen. On New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, Jill, I bet you are freezing. <laughs> Chicago. Nice to see you, Kara. Amanda. Oh, we got somebody from Florida with a smiley face. No doubt you've got better weather than we have. Dallas, ridiculously cold. Yes, Kim. <laughs> yeah, Troy, I bet, is just a little chilly, too, a little nippy. Um, so, great. Do we have any West Coasters? We've got the middle of the country here. Nebraska, cold. Hi, Emily. Oregon, Awesome. At least it's sunny. Yes, Robbie, you're right. Maryland is sunny, so we have to we have to accept that. Hi, Mindy, how are you doing? Julie from San Antonio. Texas is doing good. We don't like you in Texas, Becky. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I would send you our weather, but it's just as cold, maybe colder. Rainy. Where are you call? Where are you um, coming in from, Julie? At least we have the sun here, I guess, as someone said. Hi, Ann. Um, all right, guys. I am looking at the clock. I've got just a little bit past 12 o'clock, so why don't we get started? Keep telling us who's online so we can have a conversation. As many of you know who have been with us before on these webinars, this is always a conversation. Um, I keep the chat box open, and you'll hear me pause as we go through this to um, bring you guys into the conversation. So. Uh, please use the chat uh, to respond to a um, the questions that we're asking, the conversation to throw in your own ideas. Um, and uh, we will be doing some polls, so get ready to uh, weigh in on some some uh, questions that we've got for you. So wh what brings us today? Well, how many times have we heard the lament, nobody comes to our meetings or it's so hard to get attention? Well, let's see if we can help our chapter solve that by taking a look at how can we add Snap, Crackle, and Pop to chapter events. So for those of you who have been around before, you know that this uh, webinar is a monthly webinar, roughly, and is brought to you by Bill Highway and Mariner. We're super excited to, um, to partner with all of you in helping to develop some really robust content around our chapters, our components, and our leaders. Uh, Bill Highway, of course, is um, they, they have the answer to gut questions. Um, it's they're really about um, having a, helping you give your chapters tools that automate and simplify operations. Um, it's uh, it's about really leveraging data in so many different ways. And Mariner, and you see Peter and I down there um, in the in the uh, bottom section of the photos. Um, we've just been talking about, dreaming about different ways, um, thinking about helping people optimize their chapters, and this is just part of us going out there and as we see things, wanting to come back and respond to you and share. So um, let's talk about the problems we're having, the problems we're having with chapters who can't bring people in. They say, they can't get anybody there. But here's a problem with what they're saying and what the reality is. I love ASAE's 2017 decision to attend study because it gave us some insight in how organizations, um, how, excuse me, how members were making the decision to spend money on association events. And out of that study came 43% of our Gen Y and Millennials, right, are actually attending more workshops, seminars, conventions, and exhibitions than ever. So if they're attending, where's the mismatch? But the research went on further to say that the propensity to attend is actually high across all generations. And it's really being driven by, they refer to a strong desire for continual learning, but I would tell you it's not just a strong desire, it's a requirement 
for any of us to, to succeed in our jobs. So if we're going to succeed in our jobs, we've got to be able to find a learning that meets our needs. So if we're out there actively looking, what is the mismatch? Well, that's going to be what our agenda is all about today. We're going to explore what's behind the mismatch. There's about three elements we need to look at. Let's take a look at some winning options. These winning options are cultivated through my opportunity to speak with more than 30 um, or, uh, chapter leadership conferences in the last about 12 to 18 months. Uh, Peter and I have had the opportunity just to be in front of a lot of chapter leaders, and we have honestly heard some really cool and exciting and compelling stories around bringing members out to events and activities. So we're going we're gonna to share some of those. And then how do you take that and this is a train-the-trainer kind of thing, right? We want you to be able to help coach your chapters. Um, and so we're going to talk about a few tips for coaching and helping your chapters do this, and then we'll do a quick recap as we bring ourselves um, back around again at the hour mark. So let's start with me understanding a little bit more about you and you guys getting to know each other a little bit more. Here's your first poll. Do you require a certain number of events or activities as part of your chapter agreement? If you answer yes, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and in that chat tell us what that magic number is. If it's no, fine. And if it's um, you used to or you're considering, tell us a little bit more than that. So go ahead and, and log in and, and, uh, or click in rather. Is it a yes? Is it a no? Is it a used to or considering? Ah. So eight hours can be split up anyway, Sarah. Please go ahead and tell us a little bit more. Twelve from Amanda, three from Lori. Certain number of hours required. Ah, uh, meet quarterly. Okay. Eighteen hours annually. So and that feels like that's a lot. So tell us a little bit more in there. Um, some chapters do one hour monthly meeting. Some do full days. Yeah, that's one way of certainly get it. So great. Keep 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 um, putting it in. Let's see what's what's the answer. So. Oh, wow, let's see, um, almost 60% of you do not have a certain requirement, but 41% um, do have. Okay, so interestingly enough, in the benchmarking study, we found about that same split, um, and we did find a lot of folks were saying once a month, or they were saying quarterly. I like the fact that some of you are saying, hey, it's about the number of hours, because then that gives a lot of flexibility. Let's go to our second question. So which of the following do your chapters offer members? So check all that apply, professional development, workshops and seminars, professional development, a conference, professional development, a webinar. And I did these three things because we're seeing some shifts in how chapters are beginning to adapt to the online community. So it's kind of like these – the, the hour or multi-hour, the conference, the webinar, but do they do tours or field visits? Maybe have some social events? Are, there, are they baking in public service charitable events? How about trade shows, expos, reverse trade shows? I love what NIGP uh, chapters do around that. How about um, events specifically for students? So if you, whatever you've checked here, anything that you can add in the chat box to give us a little bit more of the story, please tell us. All right. So let's see. Sarah, what's the answer? Who, what are we doing? Oh, wow. Okay. So obviously, uh, most of, your, most of you, your chapters are writing some kind of a workshop or seminar. And second to that is the social events, which I, I love. I see that you've got about many of them doing conferences. Now, interestingly enough, 42% are saying professional development webinars. Tell us a little bit more in the chat box. Are those webinars that they're creating? Are there webinars that they're using that come out of national? Um, I know that um, what was I doing? NIGP has a really great webinar sharing program now where they allow chapters to bring a national uh, uh, program to the chapter level. Um, I see that we've got 41% um, doing trade shows, expos, great. Uh, thir only 32% events for students. Now that's an interesting place. All right, let's move on to the next one. 
this is great for us to be able to um, hear and see what some of you guys are doing. Keep the chat going. I love it. Yes, Mindy, uh, PRSA Maryland has used the national webinar once. That's great. Um, Simulcast events, John. Oh, we need you to type in and tell us a little bit more. Um, so, Diana, they are doing their own webinars, even though you offer some from national. Are you finding that they are using uh, different content, or are they using the national ideas to um, to really kind of drive their own ideas about the webinar? So. Um, yeah. Oh, and I just saw something come up from Deborah. Neat. So you have a certain number of points to receive a Chapter Excellence Award. So how do you calculate? How do you calculate those those those, those points? Um, lunch and learns, Colleen. I love that idea. Oh, they so in the middle of the webinar they'll pause it to hold a discussion. Awesome. All right. While you're doing that, talk to me about do your chapters offer head core developed education? Chapter developed education or both. So, in other words, stuff that HQ puts out, stuff that they come up with and develop themselves, or a little combination of both. And, and one of the things that we have found here, we found in the benchmarking study, and we're going to put a link in the chat if you haven't already downloaded the benchmarking study. But the what we found is that there's a trend for chapters to begin to find their own special chapter developed education. And I can tell you a little bit of a story about AIDC, one of the groups that we manage. Um, but let's show the poll, Sarah. I, I'm asking Sarah to do so many things. She's probably going, what, what? All right. So interestingly, just a, a very few of you have the Hey, uh, the headquarters developed education for the chapters. That's kind of interesting, and I'm wondering if that's an area for all of us to explore as we look at how do we add Snap, Crackle, and Pop to our, to our programs. Um, a lot of you are doing both, which is very cool. So John, thank you. The Simultaneous event is a live event at several in-person locations, and instructors at one place, they broadcast live to the other. That is really cool. We're going to have to get you um, to talk a little bit more about that. Um, Oh, Robbie, great. So you formulate chapter education events, and then um, headquarters kind of handles education as needed. So it's a great, sounds like it's a great little partnership. Well, good. So this gets us talking about and sharing about what's already happening. But I think we have to do is go back to the question at hand and say, what's the mismatch? Because if there's this kind of activity and energy at the local level, and we're still kind of missing on some of the attendance numbers, or if we've got some solid things that are working, but it's hard to get the other things up and running, um, then it's worth us looking first at what's the mismatch. And the mismatch really occurs in, in, on three buckets. Let's take a dive first into the connection bucket. So. Here's the deal, and I don't think people really understand why people come out. They do not come out for the professional de development per se. Uh, okay, I know. They do want the content. They do want the training. And you're going to say to me, the members say, oh, the, the training is most important. The reality is, is that we can get training in dozens of places. The competition is so rich. So when we do the research, what we're finding out is that it's the interaction, connections, and community. It's not it, the content is important, but do I get to interact around that content? Do I get to have conversation and dialogue about that content? Am I connecting with other people who have the shared need and interest in this content? And am I feeling as though I'm part of a learning community? Now, I know you've heard these things before. The problem is, is that when we focus our chapters on their content and don't help them build out the rest of the experience to assure that they're delivering interaction, interactive programming, con connections, and helping people find each other, and seeing them as a larger community, then the next time we promote an event to the chapter, they may opt out. So the question is, really, how do we help our groups to add these extra elements to it? I love what Peter McGrath said. He's uh, with Freeman, which of course is a huge um, expo, experiential learning um, uh, company. But as he reminds us that we crave interaction and connection, 
And it's that shared experience that really stimulates all of our senses and in doing so actually um, helps us create those memories. It is in the creation of the memories that people say, I have to go back to that next chapter event. I have to go back and see that. So the second our second stumbling block, it comes from the experience. Okay, and so what am I talking about when I say it comes from the experience? The driver to get you there is going to be that there is this incredible experience around the learning. So this comes actually from the Eventbrite study in 2017. And if you haven't seen it and you can Google it, it's got some really cool information in it. But basically, we're finding in the research that 8 and 10 millennials said that experiences help shape their identity and help them create these kind of lifelong experiences, right? Now, this makes sense. Um, when you think about this cohort of folks that we were really trying to bring into this, the local communities, um, they grew up during the recession. Families probably were watchful. They are paired with stagnant wages, then you have the, the 08 crash, and then you have all this incredible student loan happening. Um, it was a catalyst. All this was a catalyst for the sharing economy, right? So the, the sharing economy has really helped this whole notion of shaping the experience because no longer am I alone. I'm connecting. No longer am I just adding toys, right, to my toy, to my toy box. Instead, I'm getting stuff when I need it, but I'm getting to meet the person. I'm getting to have that connection in addition to it. So if this has happened, what does this look like from a chapter perspective? So as I said to you, I bounced around the country, um, had the opportunity to do more than 30 uh, chapter leadership training workshops, and, um, and candidly, a lot of what we're going to be sharing today um, as stuff that I have done in some of these workshops because there is this need to help um, chapters. And I wanted to bring this to you all so that, and give you these examples so that you could become coaches for your chapters in solving this, how do we create credible events? So I ran into this. This was an all-star event, a uh, young president's organization out of Pittsburgh. Um, can, now get this. You can see the picture, right? Now put, put this in the mind. You can see one of the two world-famous sumo wrestlers there in the corner, right? You can't necessarily see, but there were um, celebrity judges. These were people well-known in the community. Uh, I believe one of them was the mayor. You know, really people that, um, that had a following, if you will, right? You had the members, check it out, look at the youth. You had families, and they did it at the YMCA. It became a family-friendly, incredible event with some good lessons that were learned, both by the youth that were there and the adults that were there. Um, and it was an incredible experience that you wouldn't get someplace else. Is it possible for all of our chapters to do something like that? Maybe not exactly like this, but I say to you, yes. When you do it, this is the kind of endorsement you get. Now, this comes from one of the String Teachers Association's chapters. Um, I, I was looking to, I was chatting with the, with the, um, the, the leaders, and we were going to do a session all around creating the experience. Uh, one of the things that I did is I went through and I asked them who has an incredible story to share, and this story was shared. Now, the highlighted copy is what is really important here. This con convention was so amazing that it was worth the 19-hour drive crammed in a 15-passenger bus with 12 people and no trunk space. Now, I did say string teachers, so you can imagine the amount of stuff that had to be in that be in that in that bus. So don't fall back on this. No, people just won't get in the car. Don't fall back on this. People won't come. If we can create the learning experience, add the connection to the connectivity, we can get over those hurdles. Okay, third thing is communications. This is not going to surprise you. Um, 
we right now are we've gotten into many of our chapters have gotten into this hole where we do the same um, email to the same group of people about the almost cookie cutter event, right? We're not allowing our communications to engage. We're using the same old boring email. We are not getting outside of our fail safe, tried and true, easy to do. So part of what we have to do is to, um, is to help them get beyond this. All right, let me pause. I want to ask you guys another question as we jump into how, what are five ways that we can help our chapters think differently. At this point, how innovative are your chapters in creating events? Would you say that they're overall, yeah, they're innovative. A few are, many aren't. There's very little innovation across the system. Innovation, what's that? And as you're doing this, this gives me a chance to catch up on some of the very cool comments that you guys are doing. So weigh in. How innovative are your chapters in creating events? Um, I see Jill, yes, you said that they've really embraced social education, but they've – and I said has grown because of how well they do it. Jill, you've got to type in and tell us a little bit more about that, right? Um, let's see. Uh, very cool question. There's a really great conversation um, that um, from – from Liesl, thank you. Um, Liesl, probably have to get a little talk a little about that. Certified trainings, our certified trainings are offered at a discount rate for our chapters to offer. Um, that's pretty cool. So tell us, a, yeah, I think there's a little bit more conversation coming around about that. And we got a couple more messages. Excellent. I'm, so wait a minute, I'm just, I'm just reading, uh, Jenny. How about most are innovative, innovative, some are not? I love that. Okay, Jenny, good correction, good correction. And um, I'm going to ask you guys, let's, let's see what the poll says. All right. For everybody that said overall or if you are, I want you to type in the most innovative chapter event that you've seen. Okay, I know I'm uh, you. If you've got more than one, that's fine. Weigh in with more than one. But what's the most innovative chapter event you've seen? Let's curate right here a list of ideas for all of our chapters. Great. Uh, you, yeah, technical toy. They are engineers at the local water park. And oh, Jill, fabulous idea. So in other words, if I'm looking at this right, they did a technical tour, but they brought the families and they stayed and played. So it's like a sumo wrestler. That is great. That is great. Um, very cool. Uh, gauging younger people. One of our chapters had a sold out 70 people YP event. Ah, oh, Diana, tell us a little bit about a little bit more about that sold out event and how did they bring all of those YPs? Um, very cool. Oh, thank you, Jenny. Oh, uh, I appreciate that shout out. Excellent. Team building an escape room. Becky, ah, uh, brewery tour. Awesome. These are some great ideas. Well, let's go on and talk a little bit about how you can add snap, crackle, and pop to your chapter events. All right. So um, there's a bunch of stuff going on. You guys keep rhyming in because a couple of things you're going to see you're already doing, and maybe there's some new ideas in all of this. There's five things I want to share with folks about how they can add snap, crackle, and pop. Let's start with get out of the lecture breakout room. Use the city. I love the Wilderness Education Association's field-based sessions where um, – now, it's tailor-made, Wilderness Education, but they take you on these short sessions out into certain locations. You could also think about, though, getting outside the lecture to doing a hackathon, right? So using the city, I love it. Um, Jill, you mentioned the technical presentation. Um, Go-kart racing was one of them. Water park was the other. So rather than being in a room where you can do the exact same content, can we get them out? Can we, can we use that city? Um, I love the idea of thinking in terms of a different place. Has anybody tried, has any of your chapters tried a hackathon? You know, many of our groups are either 
they're, they're technical or they're professional or they're working with a client base that is constantly needing to be evolved. And a hackathon may be just the way to explore how to take um, your, any of your skills or to up the next level. Let me give you some examples that I have found about getting outside the lecture room. I love this out of St. Louis. It's called the Do Good Bus. So you book the Do Good Bus, and basically everybody gets on the bus, and then you are taken to whatever um, service project it needs to be done at that moment. So it could be to a food pantry. It could be to a park for some cleanup. It, it could be to a school where you're helping um, do um, some service projects with some students. So it's, really called, it's literally called the Do Good Bus. Okay, that gets at your community service. So here's the arborist. They, well, they love trees, and here they are at a at a, a tree plant and getting all of their folks together. They had a little bit of a dialogue about the tree and about the, the area and prepping the area so it had some learning component. And then they all jumped in and had the opportunity to help plant this tree in a park in the area. So, of course, someone's already mentioned the, uh, the pub crawl. This is a wonderful chapter event that was um, starting at one end of a really cool area in the city, and they literally did a pub crawl. And while they were doing it, though, they were having dialogue around different topics. So every pub was a different kind of a, it's a round table with a little extra add to it. <laughs> and then one of my favorites, which has also been mentioned, is let's go to an escape room where you learn team building. Now, in any of these, part of what makes the learning kind of cement is taking this opportunity to have a debrief, taking this opportunity to say, all right, what did we learn from this? So let me give you an example of a picture I didn't have, but something that PRSA Maryland did. Um, we did a photo safari. So we have amongst our members some really cool photographers and one who is an award-winning photographer. And um, we kept it to a small group. We went to Fells Point in Baltimore. Any, any, people in ba any people from Maryland know Fells Point? So we went, and he taught us how to take a picture on the fly. Because when you're in PR and communications, you have to be ready to snap the picture. And he also sort of addressed not only using a, you know, a real camera, but using your phone to get some really cool pictures. Then we found our way back to a really nice bar where we, any, people could stay for a drink or dinner, and we had a great conversation around what we learned, what were our takeaways. Um, and so we cemented the learning over a meal, right? And that's where the real conversation comes. So it's really, it's, it's beginning to, if you begin to think of how can they use the city, how can they get outside of themselves and begin to, um, to explore different ways of taking content into a new place where you're able to have some different conversation around it. Um, Nikki, love that. You're doing some simulcasting a well. Awesome. Um, and high reach equipment training held at a K1 speed. Awesome. That's some fun. I love that. Um, some really cool things over here. I hope you guys are uh, listening and reading at the same time. Yes, the bicycle bar around town. That's what I have to get a picture of um, to tour the properties for commercial real estate professionals. So, Diana, thank you for that idea. You know what? I saw um, a local uh, realtor association. They did a bus tour of all the new developments. They put everybody on, and they had a they had uh, they had cold beer and they had wine. And um, each of the developers were asked to put out just some munchies so they'd get to a facility and they'd have some munchies and do the development. All of these are examples. So how do you curate these guys? How do you curate this list and be able to get it in your chapter's hands? Okay. When you're trying to help people understand going the extra mile to find the bicycle bar, to find the escape room, to figure out how to have that connection at the aquarium, um, to determine that this photo safari is going to look. Keep in mind that this truly is about learning. Brain science shows that when you take learning and you put it in some unexpected environment, um, and particularly if you can get out into nature, it's going to trigger the release of dopamine. Um, that's 
part of the brain that is going to help you create the memories, which helps cement that learning. Okay? So this is not just, this is not gimmicky. And I know some people say, oh, this is gimmicky. Just put them in a room and get the learning done. No. This is really based on brain science. Okay. Two. Let's create some small pods in the large meetings. Now, I know we're talking about chapters. I also know a lot of chapters have some pretty large meetings. Um, uh, I remember back in the days when I, was, when I was at the Retail Bakers of Association, their conference um, grew to well, you know, to well over uh, five, 6,000 people. I know that there's a Boston chapter for um, – geez, I think it's ISPE that has that, – that's got that's – got, close to 1,000 folks. I know that here at PSA Maryland and in, and in Maryland Recycling Network, which we also manage, and the um, AIDC Appraisal Institute, which we manage, our chapters, our large chapter events are only 100 or so. That's still a lot of people. So how do you create small pods in large meetings? How do you make sure? Because remember we said one of the hurdles was creating that connections, right? A connectivity, that interaction. So how do you bake in the small to a large, right? And lots of ways that you can do this. You can think in terms of some small um, handled tech sessions. You can obviously do the roundtables, the fireside chats, um, the masterminds, the workshops. But let me share with you a couple of other ideas. So and I'm just watching over here. Jenny is talking about cocktails in the middle of the room with people move from table to table in a late afternoon. Love that idea. So I love this. And this is the water cooler. It's the National Restaurant Association. Yes, I realize this is not a chapter. But this is something any of us could do at a larger conference. Basically, they, their challenge was to um, find a way. People had said, you know, we want to network more with the intent of talking around some topics. And you can only put so many breakout sessions anyway. Or in the case of the PRSA Maryland conference, we don't have a lot of room because we're doing a smaller 100 to 150 person conference. So what they did was they went, they picked the show floor. Another chapter that I talked to has a meeting that brings in about 250 people. They picked a corner of the lobby area, and they called it the water cooler. I don't have their picture. I have the National Restaurant Association's picture. So what's really super cool about this is it's very, very informal. Now, the chapter that I talked with, they actually had somebody, they had a couple of people that would be there just so if somebody came up, they could greet them and they could talk with them. But basically, it's an opportunity for um, a series of, of topics um, that can be done in a much more informal way. You know, this can be also translated to the pop-ups that you see at, at ASAE. Um, this actually is a picture from the components pop-up we had a couple of years ago where we had to mix all the colors together because we had so many people. But the pop-ups are certainly good. And then I love this. This is a, hands, this is a picture of on the show floor, but it's a hands-on activity. And I wanted to bring this to you because notice how um, it, it's combining, they're, they're taking a, a time that would be a downtime, a lunchtime, and those people that wanted to have a little bit of hands-on activity while they ate were able to come over here and do that. So it's, it's really about figuring out how do you, if you have a larger event, how do you create those connectivities? So as, as Jenny has said, and I love, the, and I love um, Jenny, your thing about the cocktails and having people move around, because that's a way that you're actually able to um, create the smaller conversation in a larger area. Ah, Diane, I love that. You have meetups where across the region we have small get-togethers and meals together while watching or discussing with each other on online field. So that's just another way of thinking in terms of a larger group of people learning in a, in a, smaller, smaller, in a smaller area. Um, one of the things that uh, – this is from a chapter leader workshop that um, I was participating in. Uh, they did dine arounds. And um, what they've done is, you know, they have a lot, they, they have two big social events, right? But they also have one evening where you sign up in small groups based on the type of meal that you're interested in having. So um, let's talk about number three. Number three is really kind of connected to um, 
number two. But it's talking about the new networking. And we're really talking about um, creating opportunities that get beyond the, hi, how are you? How's your day? This is how my day is going. I have a boss I don't like. I have a this. I have a that, right? Um, it, it's really about helping people get beyond that. Because I can have a good time, but if, if all I have with these were these superficial conversations at a chapter event, I might not come to the next one because that's a that's a sugar high. And as soon as I get in the car and realize all the things I didn't get done, you're like, well, those conversations weren't really worth it. So how do we bake in the new network? And we can't we can't leave this to chance. And I'm going to suggest to you um, that you might want to take a look at it at an article and I'm just looking over here. It is from um Meetings Net and I'm gonna ask Sarah to put that article in there. What I loved about this idea is um thinking about this, thinking about how do we make sure networking is happening? How do we make it more intentional? How do we help chapters um create true rich conversations? Um, I love this. So this is um, a PMI uh, speed networking um, event. Uh, this was, and, and their chapters do this any number of times, any number of ways. Um, what I loved about about this one was, as you can see, um, they're talking to each other, and they they've been given a question to share about, and then they will move on to the next person, and they take notes, and they built in time for the group to say, okay, before we switch, um, shout out three or four things that you heard. So what I really like about this, um, the speed networking concept here, is that they're directing it with some conversation, right? That they're directing it with um, some uh, conversation, I mean, excuse me, some conversation starters so that the so that the interaction, right, the interaction, the connectivity that's happening has a little bit more direction. What I love about, and we're going to find the, the meetings net, I think I, um, I have to find that link for you guys, but it was a really cool article about it. Um, and basically, they came away from this thing saying that we have to help attendees find creative answers to their own challenges. So a couple of the things that they suggested along this notion um, was to bring experienced people that have experience in certain topics, and they would sit on the right side of the table. And then your folks filtering in would sit on the, on the left side of the table. So that's one way of making sure that there is some really good quality or content. Let me give you another example. The human library. Okay, I stole this from a chapter. This is truly lovely. So they took their their senior folks. Their um, like you know how you have a past past president, <laughs> or you have the senior exec of the area. So in PRSA, um, it would be like the agency head, right? Or the head of client services, or it would be the um, you know the 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 vice president of uh, communications and stakeholders in a in a in a corporation, and our and our our um, our members would be sitting below those levels. So you you get those those kind of really cool uh, gurus, thought leaders, um, you know, folks with some stature. Maybe though you pepper in um, a younger professional who, you know, runs an Instagram account that's amazing, right? And you find these folks and you list them on account, you list them on a screen and folks can come in and they can check out the human library, check out a person for 15 minutes. So I, I'm, so I'm sitting here and I'm saying to myself, gosh, I really want to figure out how to do, I, I have some real critical issues around my, in the case of PR, I say, around my um, internal communication strategy. I'm going to check out, you know, um, for, uh, our award winner in that category is always Claudia Shelfie. I'm going to check out Claudia for 15 minutes and, and pick her brain. So it's a it's it's a it's it's just a great way. I mean like I can send you to a blog post, right? I can send you to a webinar. But this is about creating those connections, the human 
um, member to member. This is why I'm a member of this organization. So anyway, Human Library, I, I, I think it's just a real powerful way for us to, um, for us to begin to help our, our members meet each other. And this is something so easy to do at the chapter level. All right. Focus on the power of moments. How many of you have read Heath's book, The Power of Moments? Anybody on the call? Um, let me tell you. The power of moments is, um, is, is, is all about understanding that if you come to an event, let's say you're at a chapter education event, and you have a little bit of a networking in the beginning, and then you have the learning, and then maybe a little post-learning right there. Um, the um, uh, post, post learning right there. Um, at the end of the day, your attendees are going to have one or two moments in that whole two hour spot or that whole four or six hour spot that are going to be indelible, right? It's understanding how do you optimize that. It's understanding. Um, Yes, thank you. Um, Sarah is so fast. She just put it up, Power of the Moments by Certain Experience Have Extraordinary Impact. It's understanding that you don't have to do the best event full of, of, of excitement and over the top for the entire day. And most chapters don't have maybe that bandwidth to create that kind of a high energy event. But it's about saying, where are those moments that are really going to be powerful and how do I make sure I optimize them? And they're talking about three traits for a powerful, for a power, powerful moment. It elevates. It takes us to uh, another level of understanding, of connectivity, of experience. It, it brings new insight, um, and it creates that connection. So uh, from the book, and when you read this, you'll, you'll, you'll read about the Popsicle Hotline, right? So the Popsicle Hotline is simply there's this hotel in um, – uh, in California, and um, they're pretty nondescript in many ways, um, but they are always rated on TripAdvisor on the top three in the area. And part of it's because of the Popsicle Hotline. So no matter where I am on the property at any time, I can go to the red phone and I can order a Popsicle. And a Popsicle will be brought to me. And it's that taking that that, that simple activity of I'm hungry, I'd love to have a little snack, and elevating it to this of-the-moment service that makes a difference. So the question I have for you and for your chapter leaders is, what's that moment that as a chapter leader I can really build up? Um, so let me give you an example actually from um, – from PRSA because we did our conference and one of the moments that really made a difference I saw, um, we started it, we opened it with a session on how to improve Baltimore's image because we're Maryland based and Baltimore, you might have heard, it's got a little bit of bad rap. Um, we had a guy facilitate this session and the, the power moment occurred when he had us walk through this process and had us at each table come up with one thing, one tangible thing that we in the PR profession could do for Baltimore. Um, and then he invited us to come up and he took time away from out of what he could have used for his lecture to have people have a moment to share their passion about Baltimore. I mean, we got so many positive responses about that because if you're in PR, you're really interested in image. And here we this collective wisdom in the room and we were tapping into it. And the panel that we had were people who were movers and shakers in Baltimore who could take some of those ideas home and act on them. How do we create the power of moments? Now there's small, medium, and larger ways. Let me share with you a couple that I found on the road. So I was, I, was, I was at the ADHA uh, chapter, and this is not something, obviously, that, um, that your chapter could do, but we could modify this. So this was an art, dis an art display, an interactive art display in the lobby. And those of you who actually went to the Cincinnati to the last annual meeting probably saw this. You go to the back booth, take a picture, and then 
um, your picture rotates among all of the hundreds of thousands of pictures. So how could you translate that power of that moment of seeing your face there and of knowing that you're part of this art installation? How could you translate that? Well, I mean, you could translate it by having a, an, a, um, uh, an artist there who's taking pictures and building a whole tree or a cloud of pictures of folks, right? Um, I love this. I was at a meeting, and um, they wanted to do a community service project, but it's a small meeting. It's a small chapter. They couldn't do a whole lot. They did bring in uh, Clean the World. They set up on the table all of the things that you needed. They brought in all the supplies. We built the bags. We built the bags. Simple, stopped you in the moment, wonderful opportunity to do something in the context of the event that I was at. This, I think, is, I mean, we have so much fun with this one. So this is a networking tool, um, but it's more than that. It's an opportunity for somebody to step back and see all of the who's that are, uh, that are involved in this community. So we're a community builder. It's a string wall. And as you can see across the top, we have um, a number of, of questions or prompts, like what I loved at a meeting I attended, um, the coolest word ever, the uh, technology that I love to use, okay? And then down here were some open-ended answers. So you took a color of the string, you tied a nail on the first one, and these were all um, nails, and you just took those nails, you just took it and you answered all the questions and you looped it around. By the end of the day, this thing was a mass of strings, and it told us how similar and yet different we were. So I think that th this thing is simple. This also becomes Instagrammable. This also becomes an opportunity to Facebook it. This also becomes an opportunity for us to paint a picture of our community. So I see a comment from Joy. Um, you say that the, the, the issue we encounter is our is one of benchmarks for a successful meeting. They are happy if they just get the same number of attendees each time and don't lose money. In addition to innovative interactivities, which we encourage, how do we get them to have the goals for the meeting beyond maintaining attendance, instead creating a great education and personal experience? I love that question, Joy, and thank you for bringing it up. I think that the interesting thing about about helping change the mindset of our chapter leaders is, is, is three things that you can do. First of all is take away the idea of numbers count in terms of attendance and start asking them and provide them with a survey doc that allows them to ask about the experience and tell them that the measure of success is that experience rating and not necessarily the number of people that are in the seats. So begin to define a successful meeting differently, but give them a metric that they can hang their hat on that makes a difference. Um, that's number one. Um, number two is I think that we need to um, – the chapter of the year programs have a place, but if you really want innovation and you really want to be able to drive innovation in events and activities, I'm going to suggest that you have an innovation of the year award. And not one innovation, but a bunch of different innovations. How do you, how do you reward chapters for doing this? How do you say, okay, every time you try one of these things on this chapter of the year report, everything that you try differently, you're going to get a point for. So really help people think differently about the metrics and reward them and incent them. And third, and I'll just say this, how they create a new event at your chapter leader workshop. I've done this a number of times. I'm telling you, this is a rock star session. We have so much fun. With IFT, we not, only, we not only had every group create a new event, we put them up, we shared them, we gave them time with a break to walk around and take pictures of them. We asked them to report back the next year. So create, give them the training, give them the metrics, and in between, reward them, reward them. Yes, um, Jenny, we have a survey that asks questions about experience, and um, I'll have Bill Highway remind me to get that out to everybody when we do the post-webinar um, mailing for you. Thanks for that question. All right. 
we have wandered around the questions, and I love it. So I'm going to speed through just a couple of quick more things. Um, here's a group that went to a local um, um, uh, craft and art museum, and they were they were wanted they wanted to teach people the value of creativity in their personal space, I mean, in their regular professional day. So they had a session on generating um, creativity. And so they, they could have just had somebody get up and speak for 50 minutes about how you could be more creative. Instead, they took it hands-on. Um, the fifth thing that I think we have to really help our chapters do is um, – really understand the importance of creating conversation. Really begin to think about how they build creation, a conversation. And a couple of ways you can do that. Um, I love the interactive stuff that I have seen. Um, and we're, gonna, we're putting a, a, a connection in there for you. I love this notion of um, help people find their match. So you could be bread and butter. This was the one I did at a, a local California chapter. It was so much fun as we went around to find, you know, our match. So activities like that that help people have find their match, these are great, great ideas to help with that networking. There's also a link on the screen for you. Another way is polling. So I don't know how many of you are at CEX, but um, one of the things that we love to do at CEX, and I have done this one at chapter leader conferences dozens of times, is I ask everybody to tell me what they're thinking, you know, one word answer to a question. Um, the one I love to do for chapters is um, – uh, one word to describe your chapter, and we build a, a, word, a word cloud, and then we talk about what that means to us. Um, I love Kahoot. We've done this a couple times at CEX. Um, oh, great. Um, Colleen, I'm so glad you were able to use, uh, <laughs> to use something like that. Um, Kahoot really – this. what I love about Kahoot even more than – but you can use Poll Everywhere for the same thing – is you've, they've sat through a session, test them. That moment of being tested allows them to cement something in there. Um, and I, I always – music, um, and there's loads of articles about how bringing music um, into a learning process helps with that. So we always, of course, with, with CEX, we have a party playlist. But, but PRSA Maryland, we had a playlist for our awards. That was our first time we did it. It was so much fun. We did a playlist for our, for our conference. And you know what? Micro-volunteering opportunity within your chapter. I have a guy who did both of those. That's basically what he's done to be a volunteer. Love him, so we do it. Okay. And finally, um, we did this. I stole this idea for CEX a couple of years ago. I stole it from another event that I went to, and I've used it at other events. This whole idea of having a, a, um, a graphic artist is amazing in terms of helping engage people in the conversation. Um, and then you have this afterwards. Uh, I love so RAPs, the Regulatory Affairs Professional folks. When they did this, um, they put these up, and they put them up in their office, right? So, um, so if your chapter does this and they've got a space where they meet regularly, they could bring this conversation and allow people to see it. Awesome. Okay. Um, I think that we need to help them um, finally power up their communications. Uh, there's a couple of things. There's really – oh, by the way, Associations Now had a great little quick read article on emails. Um, I don't know if, um, if Sarah's got that link. Let's put that out there. Go ahead and read it in Associations Now and – Share it with your folks. Um, really, it's about having an incredible, um, uh, powerful emails. You know, you know, I loved it. One thing they said was less than five words in the subject line. Less is more. Brings them in. But, but the bottom line is, we have to we have to use the website. We have to use emails. We have to use social media. We have to use video, and we have to change up that section line. So help your folks do this. If a chapter is using video. Share those videos out with other folks. Do a session on powering up your communications. All right. So we have had so much conversation going on here in the chat. Love you guys chatting, chatting, chatting. If you're listening to this afterwards, I feel like, um, Sarah, if there's a way we can do this to capture the chat and share it, I think it would be really valuable because I think you're going to find a lot of coaching ideas right in there. But let me leave you with four quick ideas. First of all, 
help them map their help them map the meeting or the event or the activity experience. A little bit more on that, but help them map it out so they can create the power of those moments. Second, host sessions on creative formats. Do a webinar like this, right? Do a session at your chapter leader conference. Um, do a, um, you know, even if you don't do a webinar, do a sit around a virtual, a virtual telephone conference. But have sessions on creative formats. People will try what they hear and see. Be creative in your own training. So instead of us, I know, I know, okay, so I know you want to do roundtables. And, okay, do roundtables. But I'm going to suggest you don't do a traditional roundtable if you want to get a new creative format. Do a hackathon. Do a design session. Um, or take two or three people who have done a really innovative um, event in, in their chapter, get them up, have them do a TED Talk, then send them to the corner of the room, and then have people who want to learn about that event. Be creative in your training. Also, use video on this, right? Create the five things they need to do. Do help them up the experience, and then create a quick little handout that lets them use it. So what I'm say, suggesting simply is that you have the opportunity to be creative in your training at your chapter leader conference, for example, that allows them to see creativity. And then if you host these sessions, they're going to get specific creative formats that have worked for chapters, and all of that ties back to the experience. And then offer training on facilitating meetings. Our people do not know how to facilitate meetings. Oh my gosh, many folks do not do a good job on facilitating meetings. Teach them how to facilitate meetings. Okay, teach them how to do that. There are online stuff that you can provide to them. You can do a webinar. You can do a session. But if you're good, whatever you do, so do a webinar. Here's a great idea. Do a webinar before your chapter leader conference. And then when they come in, have a couple of small sessions where they have to facilitate where they can take what they heard in the webinar and use it here. Now you've created that opportunity. All right. I promised, and we're going to run out of time here, but I promised to talk a little bit about help them map their experience. So I want to give you the, 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 the four quick steps in terms of mapping the experience we can go deeper into these in a blog post, so you know, don't worry too much. Okay, what you do is you sit down and you list all the major touch points throughout the event life cycle. So what does that mean? It's like um, it's everything from the from the moment that they have to register to when they get to the event to um, the getting through the registration to uh, the each piece of the event to the evaluation of the event. Okay? Map all those touch points out. What you want to understand is what is the journey from the attendee's perspective, right? And that you need to consider what they're experiencing from the before, the during, and the after. Now, a great way to do this is to have somebody whose job it is at the chapter level to, on an event, map it out as it is happening. So in other words, watch it, capture it, report it back. So in other words, they don't do anything else for the event except for, list, except for map the touch points. Then for each touch, touch point, once you've got them out there, list all the opportunities, all the ideas for creating a memorable experience about that. So um, for example, our BIM, a Best in Maryland big event coming up in December, we've decided to add valet parking. Why? Because the parking is available, but it's a little, it's going to be cold, it's a little way. So we have valet parking, and we have a sponsor for that, right? So if people are going to come up. They don't have to park. They're going to come up. We've created how do I get into the building in time because it's a post-work event. All the opportunities and ideas for that. As you're doing that, look at all the event brand and messaging around each of those touch points. So where are you making sure the messaging is going to be in sync with the event and reinforce that this is your event and, how, and, and the value of that event? And then finally, I want you to tie in the technology that will enhance the attendee journey. So CEX this year, we did a um, we used an app for the first time. Sarah, can you can you um, share the company for that app? And I love it because NACE, um, uh, Kathy came to the CEX, and they're going to use the same event for their chapter leader conference in January. Um, anyway, um, the um, the. Uh, Find that technology connection. The technology connection could be swap card. Thank you. Uh, the, te the, the, te 
technology um, part could be um, the how are you engaging them in the front end registration. So you know, Eventbrite allows pe allows you to see who's coming. Promote that, right? So put that technology in there. All right. So we've given you so many things to think about. There's lots of lots of ways that you can approach this. Inherently, the purpose of our chapters is to get people face to face. It's to it's to it's to celebrate the member connection in a face to face way. Nationally, we can do this online. Nationally, we can get away with that virtual. Um, uh, just a moment, David. Um, the 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 important thing here is how do we help our folks do the best job that they can do in a face-to-face -face environment. Um, David, I love it. You asked just asked the question um, number four. So um, essentially, it's 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 applying the technology to each of those touch points. So anyway, guys, what are you going to do next? I mean, it's 1 o'clock. You have to get back to your desks. You have to get the, the work done. Uh, type in the chat, what are you going to do next? Take one little thing from this. Maybe it's a picture that you've screen grabbed. Maybe it's a concept of touch, uh, touch points. Maybe it's just help them write a better, um, a better subject line. Take one thing from this to do next. All right. Type it in there so we can experience it. Uh, I've got to tell you that the 2019 Chapter Benchmarking Report, if you don't already know, it is out and about. What we added to this year differently, thanks to Bill Highway and Deirdre who helped us and Kevin who helped us, is we added some stories in there of examples of some, what associations are doing. You'll see some great shout outs. And who is on this one, we have a great piece about her and what she's doing with her chapter certifications and credentialing. and. And there's some really cool things. And finally, um, CEX! It's coming in 2020! The date is not confirmed, but uh, because we're working with a couple of different places to nail that down, it is coming. It will very likely be in October because that was, for those of you who don't know, at CEX we did a, uh, we did a poll. October still seems to work for folks. So watch for details on that. Please put that in your budget. Um, and in fact, I just want you to know, that we've taken some of these experience things, and experience is, uh, what can I say? We're going to bring it to life. Alrighty, guys. Our time is up. I hope you had a great day, a great hour with us today. I've enjoyed the conversation. We owe you some things. Get out there. Help your chapters do put a lot of snap, crackle, and pop into their events. Catch up with you next month.